The remote command pendant is an in-turn fourth axis mill turn controller with advanced pendant features added. This system has now been ported to Linux CNC and PathPilot. The pendant features an industrial quality joystick for multi-axis variable speed jogging, a remote command system that stores and sends any command the user wants in a series of cells on the 7-inch touch screen. Instead of having regular pots on it, which is analog, this has encoders on it. So you'll notice the whole time we've been ta talking and demonstrating this, there's been no jitter. There's the, uh, the, the readouts, the coordinate readouts are absolutely still. The, ma the machine is absolutely still because it's an encoder rather than analog. Analog is subject to all kinds of interferences and it tends to be real jittery. The encoder is not going to send any commands until you move that stick. It's immune to, to noise. It's immune to jitter. Also, it's, uh, it's controlling not only the direction, but it'll control two directions and it controls the speed. So on the x-axis, I'm going to go, I can go from, you see the velocity on the screen over there? Uh, I, can, I, can crawl, I can crawl along at one. I can get, there you go. And, or I can go all the way up to, right now it's set for 50. It can be whatever you want it to be, however fast your machine is. So I can crawl along at, at a very slow rate and get this close to where I want it. And a, and a nice feature of Linux is that, uh, and this is this is the only software that I've come across that I, that can that I can do this. You have the uh, the joystick is active, and then as soon as it, when the joystick uh, stops, you can start hitting the, uh, the incremental. Again, I'm going to move this close to where I want to get it to, and then I'm going to slow down and get it relatively close. And once I get it where I want, then I can just start tapping on the screen, and I'm going to get a thousand at a time. This is all active at the same time. You don't have to switch from one mode to the next. All I'm doing is I'm moving the joystick, I get it where I want it, and I just start tapping, and I've got all of my jogging. So this, these, um, these uh, keyboard jogs could be put into these cells if you wanted to. Time. So you could. The uh, z-axis is uh, it doesn't it doesn't have a variable speed. It's a, it runs at a set speed, and that was a decision that I made in order to uh, be able to use it for tapping. Or these uh, squares on the on the screen are called cells. So in any cell, any one of these cells that I'm clicking on, you can have any command that you want. So, and, and you can have a, a, up to a hundred of these. So right now, for example, this home X axis is in there and this is user configured. So you use a little XML file that has all this information in it. And all you have to do, if you want to, if you want to create new commands, it comes with uh, a, a lot of all the standard commands that you would normally want to use. But if you have special macros or do you want to do something unusual, you can create your own, uh, your own commands. So what this does is it sends, uh, it's, and again, it's a touch screen, so it sends the information that's in that cell. Uh, if you wanted to home the Z axis and you have it, so you don't have to have this on the cell. I'm, this is just to select. So right now I'm on that cell. I can actually push this down. This button turns from green to red and then to off. And that, that has meaning. So if, right now if it's off, all it's doing is moving that little, um, the little selector around. If you have it on a cell and you press this down and it turns green, that means you're ready to change the contents of the cell itself. So this is how you change what's in the cell, and it's, it's only going to change that cell. Now when it's red and you press it down, uh, the cell is armed. So armed means uh, that it, when you press that button, when you press that cell right now, it's going to actually send the command uh, to the CNC. Right now there's a, a group uh, cell down here that... Uh, defines what's in each group. You can have as many groups as you want. You make the groups just by pressing the button and then whatever's showing on the screen at that moment becomes a group. And of course, if you're in, if you're in the green mode, if you remember, that makes you change. But now you're in group, so you change a whole group at a time. So you can have a group for homing, a group for tapping, a group for, you know, it's a turning, turning misting and flooding on and off, right? Things like that. You can have a whole bunch of uh, macros in there. You can have tools in there. So, so all these groups are just for convenience, they're, they're dynamic, it remembers what they are, but you can change them easily. So in order to arm all, the entire group at once, all you have to do is be on the group, and then this is red, and when you press that, then it'll arm, it'll arm all of them at once. So once they're armed now, you can we can send that information by just tapping on the tapping on this uh, cell. Yeah. Axis. None of the axes are home, so I can just hit this and it'll home the axis for me. And uh, you see you're going to get a little status area right here. It's going to tell you exactly what happened. And then I have macros. It'll send macros over there. It'll send anything that's in that cell. So, uh, and you can see, you can see the, the thing, you can see it changing on the screen as it goes, as it goes through. 
So the, the uh, turning mode and index mode. In index mode, you have uh, typical fourth axis functions like uh, indexing and coordinated motion. If, as soon as you go into the turn mode, uh, the dependent uh, takes over control of the fourth axis, disconnects the CNC, and uh, and begins to run the uh, the fourth axis by itself. So uh, then, when uh, you have you, you have two speed modes uh, for setting the speed, one is uh, called set speed. It's relatively easy to understand. It's just you just set the RPM that you want, and this is a slider to do that. And uh, and it and it will go then to that RPM. So these are the on off for the spindles. Turn the spindle on, and it will go. It accelerates to uh, the set speed. The acceleration rate is controllable down here. There's this acceleration. There's two different acceleration sliders. It controls two parameters of acceleration, and that won't be explained in this video because it's outside the scope of it. But you'll notice that when I turn this off, it's going to it's accelerating quite a bit faster now because I have the acceleration set up. But auto speed mm -hmm. mode is a surface feet per minute. So you actually don't set the RPM you want, you set the surface feet per minute you want. And what it does is it tracks either the Z axis or the Y axis, depending upon where you're holding the tool. And what it does is uh, it, will, it will increase this or decrease the RPM automatically to maintain whatever surface feet per minute that you put in here. Notice whenever I do anything on the screen, it's coordinated on the on the pendant. So right now I'm turning the auto Y axis on and off, and, and this is going this is switching back and forth from Y to Z. Uh, we're going to leave it on Y, and I'm going to Y is at 1.4 inches now. Uh, so I'm going to turn on auto speed, and I'm going to turn the spindle on, and you'll see that the RPM will move up to 105 RPM. That's to maintain the, the 81 RPM. So now we can change this. And it will, and the RPM, and the RPM will change to maintain whatever that surface feet per, feet per minute is. And also, if I change, the, if I move the y-axis, then you'll see the RPMs are changing as well. As I get further away, it slows down, and as I get closer in, it starts to speed up. The uh, the, the speed on this is controlled by the knob, and uh, it, the knob controls whatever uh, whatever the appropriate speed is. If I'm in auto speed mode then the same knob changes the auto speed surface feet per minute setting and if I'm in set speed mode then the, the same knob uh, alters the RPM. And there's two knobs on here and the reason and two knobs and two on off buttons. These are the this is an on off button. This an on off button it starts and stops the spindle because the controller is able to actually control a, 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 a servo powered mill spindle. So if your milling machine has a servo on the driving the mill spindle, this will control that too. Uh, I can actually change this from uh, forward to disarm to reverse, and it's actually changing on the screen at the same time. So, what forward and forward and reverse is easy to understand. What disarm means is that you notice a light went out on this button, and so right now this button is dead; it will not start the, the spindle. This is a pendant, and it needs to be handled. So, and for for it has safety features that. Uh, prevent it from, from prevent you from um, accidentally starting a spindle, accidentally starting the fourth axis, accidentally sending a command, or moving the joist or moving the tables around with the joystick, because everything can be disabled. Now, notice on the joystick, you can uh, you can say A B C axis, or it can disarm it. When it's disarmed, if you bump it, if you're moving the pendant around, it won't it won't change it won't move anything, and it goes back to X Y Z. So it really controls all of the axis, and, uh, and it's also safe to to move it around. Uh, they have uh, you can uh, you can do lock unlock everything that you can do on the screen you can do from here and it's coordinated with the screen you'll see that this, this changing we can go from lathe mode to index mode and so forth here's in and then up here in this area operational status this is all the information that you would normally see on the uh, LCD readout on the motor controller so you have all the same status information it tells you what mode it's in and various things so uh, this, uh, as far as the touch screen is concerned, here's the intern. It says intern is disabled, and uh, so now it's, it's when it's not disabled. It's when it's enabled. It's a big blue square. So why do we have a big blue square? The big blue square is actually a gauge. This is a, this is a, right now sitting at zero because it's not connected to anything. It can be connected to the um, anything that has an analog output signal. So for example, if you have a drive on the fourth axis that has an analog output as far as the spindle torque is concerned that can be uh, you can tell it you want it to track that so in real time while your while your fourth axis is in turn mode 
then you'll get you'll get the spindle load right here. And of course, if you have a servo controlled mill uh, spindle, you'll also get the the, the, the uh, Spin the load for the mill for the milling machine head. So, so this area right here is for error messages or for status. Tells you what it's what's going on. So you don't have just uh, if something is is not in the right, correct mode or it's not ready to to be um, executed or there's some kind of a problem. It doesn't just you don't have just inactive buttons. It, it'll tell you what's wrong, what it's unhappy about. So we're gonna go back to the arming of this, and you see the light comes on. Now it's in reverse. Now it's in forward, and I can turn the spindle on from here. And then you see the RPM readout.